What is going on guys? So we do have a new set of tires for the Cadillac here. Totally messing, but actually, believe it or not, I did spec out the cost of a new set of tires like this, these tires for the Cadillac, and I'm actually thinking about doing it. But these tires are actually for the 24 valve, so I'm gonna give it away now. These are the tires that are going on it. They're a 35. They're 13 and a half wide and they're a 22 inch rim. It's not gonna be like a mega stretch look. It's gonna sit pretty flush with the side wall. Super excited about that, but I did spec out this set of tires for the Escalade as well. The Escalade doesn't need tires right now, but it's getting very close. There's 46,000 miles on that thing already which is crazy, and most of those miles are actually from us over the last year of owning it. Kind of low on tread. Um, if we don't drive it a ton, they'll probably last us until spring, but I'm probably not gonna wait until they're bald to replace them. And I thought about getting a set of all-terrain Venom Powers for this thing, because they make a tire in the exact size that the factory tires are on this, and I think it would look pretty cool. And we did actually get the wheels for the truck as well and uh, I'll give I'll give you this much they are anthems in their 22s super curious what this Jeep would look like in clean condition because it looks really rough like when you look back you're like oh man uh, this thing looks like the paint is gone but in reality the paints are really not that bad there's just a lot of grime buildup from over the years of not maintaining a good wash on it and the paint actually looks really good underneath so I'm very curious as to how it'll turn out and I'm considering getting this thing fixed enough to take it through a Mike's car wash before we actually do get really rough with this thing and see what the paint looks like beforehand because I'm actually really curious. But I think I have an idea of what we've got to do to fix this. So this thing has the security light on when you put the key in, you turn it forward. The security light is on and it was not letting me start it the other day. And it does that. Some people said this is how you fix it. I have no idea. I don't even know if the key fob works or not, but it does not appear to be working. Let's see if this works. That's locked. Let's see if we can Unlock it. Apparently there's a few different ways. I can try to get this security light to go away. Currently it's still there. Let's see if we can uh, unlock the passenger's door and see if that changes anything. So now I stuck the key in the passenger side door on the outside and I locked it and then I just unlocked it, and the security light is gone. I don't know if that'll fix it or not, but the light's at least gone. And now it's running. This is the first time this thing has started up since I took the oil pan off, changed the oil, and all that other stuff. So the oil pan was taken off. It had a huge hole in it. For those of you who did not see that video, it didn't leak that bad because the oil uh, pan hole was so high but it was still leaking some oil. So uh, basically when the oil would run down off of the components on the lower half of the engine, it would basically drip down and the stuff that would drip down along the side would end up getting out there. But for the most part, most of the oil was held down low and the oil was pulled out from down low. So it still had almost all the necessary oil it was supposed to have in it. You can see right here, there was almost another crack to go through the pan right there as well. So the vehicle does have a brand new oil pan and all new oil in it as we speak. Just vacuumed out all of the crud on the floors and on the seats in the front, passenger side, driver's side, back seat. No more dirt, mud, and grass all over the seats. It's, it's actually a really nice interior. I'm actually really shocked. There's all sorts of stuff. There's old boots, chip bags, bread bags old headlights, I don't know if they're any good or not, plastic bezels, dash pieces, headliner pieces, grill piece, fender piece, old t-shirts, knives, I literally found an old knife in the glove box. Doesn't hold itself up, so it just closes. But yeah, I looked in the, uh, in the glove box, 
I'm like, oh, that's kind of odd. Freaking knife in the glove box. I'm not gonna, you know, say that it was used for self-defense or murder or anything like that. Um, but I will say that there's a little bit of old red, weird residue on that, and that's kind of weird. I did get this from a slightly eerie place down an alley somewhere in Fort Wayne. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but uh, it's kind of odd. He's all cleaned out. Actually, this, this thing is actually very clean inside. I, I keep saying it, but it is so clean inside. This is going to be used as a little trail vehicle, something to grab deer, go over and do property work, and I just want to drive it all the way back into the woods, that type of deal. I mean, that's what it's going to be used for, and it'll fit perfectly on our little car hauler right there with not, not the small trailer, the one back there. It'll fit perfectly on our 20 foot car hauler with lots of room if we want to tow it behind the Cadillac or behind any of the trucks. It's a small enough vehicle that it could be easily towed by anything that we have to drive. The heat works great. It goes up to like what? 86 I guess. Kind of cool. The fan works and it blows hot heat. I'm gonna pull back into this little section of pasture here and you know, see if I can lose traction enough to have the opportunity to lock up the four wheel drive and um, see what happens. Okay, now this might do it up on this incline. It's pretty steep going back up. So, yeah, it's just spinning out. You can see the RPMs going up. It's just spinning. So, what we're going to do now is put it in four wheel drive part time and it'll actually pop up right there and say part-time four-wheel drive. And then, let's do it in reverse for a sec. See if it changes. Oh, there it goes, it locked. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, that it works. It's the next day, and we're ready to test this thing out on a trail. Well, we are here. The Jeep made it the whole 15 miles. And let's see if it can make it through about a mile on the trail back in the woods. If you're gonna make fun of me, at least do it on camera so they can hear you trash talk my Jeep. It's a zoom in. I wonder if we should go to four wheel drive full time. Yeah, because this is really bad. It's true. But since we have a Jeep, we can make it. But yeah, we're definitely not getting stuck anywhere. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Test number one. Can the Jeep make it down basic logging roads? Are they submerged right now with water? Uh, no. No? You sure? Do like run. one spot where there's a little bit of water. Okay. We'll see what happens. I think it's gonna sink. Oh, this spot is like the one spot with mud. Oh, wow. It's a Jeep, bruh. Oh, the ruts are deep. Where's the trail gun? Oh, we're just squeezing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we are squeezing. Oh, wow. wow. This thing is actually so freaking fun though. Who's frozen? This stuff was actually kind of deep. I thought I was going to be nervous. I thought I was going to get stuck, but then I realized like, I have a Jeep, so. Yeah, pretty much. I mean. From now 
now on, I'm going to be a Jeep person. The tire fell off your first five minutes driving. Yeah, but you can't hold it against a Jeep. <laughs> You've only had two blood guns. <laughs> I'm just glad that it has these like mirrors that kind of fold but don't. I don't actually want to hit that because I will have to replace my little again. <laughs> Do you think we're going to be able to make it through that tree? There's the water. Oof, the tree down there is pretty big. I mean, to be honest though, this thing is just like rolling. Oh wow, that tree's a lot bigger up close. Yeah, it's not. It's not that big, but it's 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 big enough. Yeah. Not the stump though. That would suck. <laughs> that would actually really suck. Look how deep that is right there though. Yeah, it's like a foot now. It just like slides around. Like it doesn't even like. I don't know. It like doesn't even slow down. Your exhaust sounds amazing. With your time. I would put down my window and record outside of the car, but this window falls out when <laughs> the, you do that. The passenger window just fell out. Oh my. Why, do, why does it feel like this tire over here is like clunking, like it's about to fall off again? I feel like the whole Jeep's clunking, like it's gonna <laughs> fall apart. That's true. I guess we're gonna see how short the Jeep is. Go for it. Doing this. It's good. No, it's not running right either. It's got some alignment issues. A no big deal. Bit. A little bit. No big deal. Well, they saw the chair like a week ago, so I thought I'd show them again. Oh. Update. Is it about done? Oh. Well. You gotta tell them. Is it about done? A lot of guys are like, man, that's one freaking cool looking chair. Bench. Yeah. Um, yes, I just have to put uh, probably three more coats of oil on it. Can you make something like that, Malachi? Absolutely. Not. Well, other than breaking a transmission line, it handled really good. But Dad had these F-350 coil blades around. That was an easy 200 bucks. And then I heard through some forums online, I was looking up like old Cherokee lift kits and stuff. The guys are talking about using the F-250 and 350 coils to actually raise the front end up a little bit. Now they said that they ride like complete garbage, but it gets it in the air if that's what you care about for clearance. So we're gonna see if it works and test out putting these coils up under the front end of this thing. The actual mounting point up top is almost identical in size right here to where it's supposed to hold it in position up there for the coil. And the base is kind of just like a generic block of steel it just kind of sits over so I mean it's not like super I don't know how I put it like fitted specifically we gotta fix the trans line and then we're gonna mess with this so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget that if you want to enter to win our 24 valve Cummins our silver 24 valve it's getting new paint new lift new wheels new tires all kinds of stuff if you want to win that truck plus five thousand dollars cash all you have to do is go to lnpgear.com and every one dollar right now is 10 entries until i believe it's january 25th and then the deal's gone and then 10x entries are going to be gone they won't come back so if you want to get the bonus deal we also just had a new merch drop go live so there's new hoodies and shirts and stuff another brand new drop the retro hoodie is my favorite if you want my preference i think the retro hoodie is awesome thanks so much for all the orders and all the support couldn't do what we do without you guys i'll catch you in the next video peace peace well, here's an update. I ran out of transmission fluid, so now I'm limited to 15 to 20 mile an hour top speed and hardly 2,000 RPM. I'm guessing it's some kind of safety thing or just absolutely will not shift because there's no fluid. That could be it too, but I've got five more miles until I'm home. 
going 15 mile an hour.